Well, this is old electronics fan, and well, I'm a little disappointed, I guess. Um, I had filmed a, a video on repairing this damn transmitter, and a good two thirds of it was corrupted, so I couldn't use it. So, I decided I would try to do what I could to try to um, recreate what I could. I wasn't going to take this all apart and do everything I did in the previous video because, well, you'll see shortly. Um, where do I want to go from here? Alright, so, I was using, at one point in the video I was using this, a capacitance meter, to um, check all of these guys. And I thought one of these was uh, really was bad. Uh, in fact, it was this one. So I put this one, I installed that one in here, and I could not get it to tune. I could not get it to work. Well, stop it. I haven't been on that long. So, um, so I had to take that one out and go grab another one. So I decided to test these using this. Um, in fact, let me show you. Um, let's see here. We'll zoom in a little bit. Let's grab these two and this one. This is the original one that was in here, and you'll see why I've hung on to it, like I said, in a minute. Oh, all right. So. My thoughts are every which way. Let me back up a little bit. <clears throat> this is a new capacitance meter. I made a mistake and I blew up the other one. It was my mistake. I just wasn't paying attention and I did something bad and went kablooey. So I got another one and shortly after I started using it, this wire broke right here and came out. These on thread and this end was loose in here. So every time I used it, it was twisting and it broke the wire off. So I tightened it up really good this time when I repaired it. Um, and I now tape these so this end can't move. But I thought, you know what? These are the, the um, probes from my old one. Those are working. I'll use one of these. Well, guess what? It's broken right there. And I was wondering why on earth, um, why on earth this brand new capacitance meter wasn't working very well. Well, that's why. Meter cords have gotten so cheap, um, makes me want to go out and buy much better quality ones to avoid that kind of stuff, because that, that was driving me around the bend. And this was intermittent, so I kept wondering, well, what would make this intermittent? And I said, oh, well, if this, these, what if this cord is doing the same thing as this one did? Of course, this one was obvious. It broke. It came apart. So, yeah, so I checked it with my new meter. I bought this because I had a low-end meter that went belly up. It died. It's an old Radio Shack. I've had it for, oh, boy, 34 years. I don't know. Long time. But it terminated, unfortunately. So I thought, well, I'll just buy another cheap one. And I thought, you know what? I've got this old Radio Shack meter here that, um, while it works, seems to be a bit slow uh, in getting to the resistances. Um, auto ranging isn't fa as fast as you might like sometimes if you're impatient in a hurry. So I thought, well, why not get a better one? This one's rated at 1,000 volts AC and DC. Um, I got some of the radios I, I, I deal with, uh, their transformers put up, I don't know, 720, 750 volts. I think this one will do, this one will go to 750. This one is only, what? Uh, oh, that was 1,000 DC and 750 AC. What are you? Okay, so these are all pretty good, actually. 
um, 1,000 volts, 750. All right, well, this is 1,000, 1,000 for what it's worth. But I decided I wanted a newer meter, a better meter. This has a larger display than that one. It's easier to see. People have complained about this one out in the sunlight. This will never see sunlight. It will stay here on my workbench, so I don't care. So, I spent 100 bucks on that. Uh, you can spend a whole lot more than on a, on a fluke or something. So far, I like this. I have used it a bit. Um, but anyway, I wander far afield. We're not here to talk about that. We are here to talk about the AM transmitter. Now, I do want to mention one thing. Um, if you're trying to match up one of these and see if they are the same value, um, just be aware that the tuners on top make a pretty good difference uh, in what the capacitance is. The other thing is on this particular capacitor, it's got to be, you got to turn all the way counterclockwise. And that gives you maximum capacitance. And it's pretty easy to check. You crank it the other way all the way, and then it's the, the lowest capacitance that it can do. So, I obviously want to check them at maximum capacitance. And so I've cranked all these to the left. And they're pretty close. Uh, let me just turn this on. I know it's one well, it's 60 and 160. Oh, and this one. I don't know what happened to this. I did put this in my AM transmitter. I could not get this to tune properly for anything. So I took this out, put another one in, it worked perfectly. So, in fact, it was almost right dead right when I got it. So anyway, um, let's put you here. I don't need you now. So it's been interesting. So, oh yes, so to continue my, my story with that bad cable, I was trying to measure these and this one seemed to be way out in left field when I finally pulled it back out and checked it. I thought, oh, that's why. Well, guess what? That's not why. So this is the old one that I, I took out. This is the new one that I tried in here. So let's do a little comparison between these two. And that, this was the other thing I was trying to do with that broken cable and didn't know I had. All right, so 56.5, 140. That seems lower than the, I was reading before. That's 61, 47, 147, and this was what? 141. So it's close. Let me see, what was this one again? 54, maybe 55, that's 59. Again, um, now you can see, I don't, you can see that these are adjusted to pretty much the same position. I do not know why this one will not work in my AM transmitter. I'm glad I bought more than one. <clears throat> the price was right, and so I said, well, why not? And maybe I could use one of these for other projects. And this one might work for something else. It just doesn't work in this AM transmitter. So, if, so if you're trying to compare capa uh, adjustable capacitors, there's going to be, they won't be precise, first of all. There's going to be some variation, and understand that your trimmers are going to make a difference, too. So, um, let's not do this anymore. Put this over here for now. So let's go back to this. What problem was I having? Oh, by the way, this is my box that I created. This, the circuit board on this, measures maybe three and an eighth by just under three and a half. Try to find a little box that's square like this, even the one not square like this, uh, that was that's somewhere around, I don't know, four by three and a half. I would have been happy with that. Couldn't find it. I looked for work boxes. One of the things I didn't like about work boxes, do I have one kicking around? Um, here's one. So I can find ones like this that would probably be okay. The problem is, is the post, you see the screws into a post, the post goes all the way down the side. And I wanted this side of the circuit board tight against this wall, and I wanted this circuit board, this side of the circuit board tight against this wall. Because so I was going to have my uh, headphone, or my, yeah, my headphone, my 
uh, audio in and my power supply plug here. And then I have, I have my tuning um, wheel here and of course the on-off uh, gain control. Now, so having something in the corner here would have been a pain and I have to cut out all that plastic and I just wasn't crazy about doing that. Um, so, I had a piece of plastic kicking around. I did a really quick and dirty job of um, cutting up some pieces that I wanted. And I went with 4x4 four four for two reasons. Number one was um, it seemed to be the simplest way to just quickly build a box. Maybe down the line this will get used for something else. I doubt it, but who knows. Um, in order to get this in here, I needed to have room in the back, so I needed about four inches so I can drop it in and slide it forward. Um, and then when I'm built, when I was building this, I said, "Well, if I make it four by four, it'll make it easy to know, you know, to put it together, because these sides are are longer than these sides because this fits inside it between these two." And I did exactly what I knew what I was going to do. I tried to use the short side or the long side with one where one of the long sides should have gone, so I. I caught it quickly and fixed it. But so much for making it easier on myself. So anyway, so I've just got this top taped on, uh, just in case I have to get in here and do something, like repair it. Um, I may put a little hinge on it and latch, I don't know. There's an old saying, it's only temporary unless it works. This works, it's probably not going to be temporary, it's probably going to be permanent. So anyway, so back to this. What was wrong with it? All I had to do was set it on the table, and it would shut off. It was static. If I if I tried to tune with it, it would do the same thing. All I had to do was even just push up and down a little bit, and it would drop out and come in, drop out and come in. And um, so, I mentioned in one of my videos that somehow, some way, um, this was the one. I think we got it pretty cleaned up. On the top of, on the top here, you see, oops, the other way. And, oops. All right. Let's do this. All right, see the white part right here? That's a plastic shield that goes under the metal part that you see this half moon here. So when I was troubleshooting this, um, I took this plastic cover off. If you take these little connections here, if you take this out of your circuit board, you can flip these little flat connections up and the plastic piece can come right off. Um, whoops. And the plastic piece is, is a couple of little clips and just pop it right off. So I got in this, I, I noticed some some black specks in this part. So I cleaned it with a small uh, jeweler screwdriver here and here, and then rotated it and cleaned it some more, and I kept working on it until I got it all cleaned up. I don't know, I, I assume it was metal. Um, so I, I, I was thinking that that was my, the culprit. Um, but and it may have played a part, and I think this may have been tuned such that um, these two plates go like that, I and mean, they were, you know, super close. Which any kind of metal going between the two would cause problems. So I kind of assumed that that was the issue. Um, and I blasted some air in there to make sure that I got stuff out of there that, um, you know, might be in there causing problems. Didn't see anything. Put it back together. It seemed to work okay for a while, and then it started misbehaving again. So uh, I need to look at the video segments that I did get from my recording, and then I'll put those in probably here. Well, I couldn't help myself. I decided to open this up. And I think I may have found it. Um, you can see it in the camera better than I can, and I put a magnifying glass on it. There's either corrosion there, right there, or um, 
this fine metal metallic powder. I'm not sure which. All right, so you just saw me point out that there's a problem on the top of this. Upon reviewing the video and uh, upon cleaning this with a cloth, <clears throat> I've come to the conclusion that there was indeed some metal dust in there. Which is one of the reasons why I built that. <clears throat> so, I also found something else out that was pretty strange. And I went and looked at all of the other all of the other uh, capacitors that I have. And <clears throat> So I wanted to see how this was put together, because this one had you've got these little two little washers on top, very small, um, which you saw in the previous video. Now <clears throat> there was another one. Where are you? Oh, come on over there. Can't see where is that? Oh, there's the washer. Let's put it there. Oh, you can't even see that. Oh, there it is. That's a third washer. Now, obviously, having metallic dust in here is not good. But I don't think that was the other only problem I had because that washer, the washer you see right there was on one of these legs. Um, I think I think it was on this one. Now, like I said, I've, re I've checked all of these and on these there's an opening because you uh, uh, there's an opening here to allow this connection to come out. But on the other side, it looks like you could have more connections this plastic cover is designed for additional covers or connections, but you can look in at the top of this post and you can see right here and you can tell how many of these are. Now, they're on there. Now, this, this aluminum plate is reflective, so if you don't look at it at the right angle, it's going to look like there are more of these little, these little washers um, than there actually are. So I very carefully looked at all of looked at all of these through a magnifying glass, and as far as I can tell, there are only two of these washers here, and there are no washers on any of these legs. Um, excuse me. There's a there's a little there is a little washer that's forced down on over this post to make sure this stays put when you take it apart or when you're trying to assemble it. But there is no additional washer on any of these. I looked and I can see them. So I started thinking about that because at one point I had that third washer put in here and I thought, you know, and that made this very stiff. So I was wondering about that. And um, Here's what I think. That extra washer lifts this leg up, which creates a clearance here, which then means that there isn't a good connection between here, this, this top washer, or, and this plate. What I think was happening with, with this was that you were losing your common connection because the washers have to be tight against this and these have to be tight against this. I'm going to bring it down a little bit because I keep wanting to go the wrong way. The top of this nut or this shaft has a, has a shoulder and these washers, these washers push against that shoulder and then on the back side of these washers, and on the top side, they push against this plate. What I think was happening was that because of that extra washer that got put in here, 
these, these washers were not tight against this plate. And when you moved this, and then it, either whether it's this way, which that that tuning knob would have done, it could have moved this and rocked it, or the um, or just trying to move it, just trying to rotate it, you're still not going to be going at it straight on. And so you're going to be putting a side load on it that's got an up and down motion to it. And so the only thing that was making connection was the tip of this pin and this hole. And that's not going to work. So the dust that was there wasn't great to have it. But I really think the big problem was that there was an extra washer in here and that these washers were not tight um, against here and against this plate the way they're supposed to be. So I really do think there was a uh, mistake. Excuse me. I'm yawning. Um, I think there was a mistake in manufacturing that had this extra washer put on here. I don't know if this was a new person or what. Um, but like I said, I went and I looked at all the other other tuners that I had. And I went in there. Um, and on this one, if I, if I go in and I put my screwdriver against there and I check to see if the washers are tight enough. Let me use a smaller screwdriver. That'll fit in there better. Let's see, can we... Get some more bits. More light on there. Alright. I don't, I don't know if you can see that very well. I'm barely able. Yeah. I don't see that moving. Oh, is it? Oh, is it still? Oh, you couldn't see what I was just doing. I was just I was holding down on these two corners and I was trying to get my screwdriver in there try to um, separate them and I, and I can't. I think they're in there tightly now. I think the problem was that extra little washer right there. There's no point in um, showing you put me putting this back together. I've shown you what I want you to see. Uh, i get that out of the way. Um, so, Alright, so I quickly threw this together and I thought about this for a minute and I decided I wanted to just use an ohm meter to see if that connection is good. And, as you can see, it's not. So, I don't know if, have, if, if me putting that third washer in here flex that top plate so it's not doing what it's supposed to. But when you compare that with one that I have not done anything to, um, the resistance is lower for one. And it uh, is stable. So, if you ever do work on something like this and you want to know how to test it, if this happens to be the center post that you're worried about, um, this is how to do it. Um, I thought about using a capacitance meter, but I don't think that's the best idea. Let me... Uh, I'm, I know I'm spending a lot of time on nonsense but I want to put the extra washer in here I'm assuming that we'll fix the problem with this and that would mean that this would in the future be useful for a buck it's not probably worth all of this time but I'm curious so I'll be back again okay I set this up and this is now behaving pretty much like the other ones do. So, oh, you can't see though. It's the glare. Lovely. Alright, so. Let 
Yeah. That cured it. That extra washer. So, I don't know what actually happened with this. Um, kind of strange, to say the least. But, um, so you slide this on, pop it down into place, and then just fold these guys back over, and you're good to go. So, um, yeah, so this one is now stiff turning, just like all the others. Are they as stiff? That one's easier. That was a little bit stiff. This one was way too easy when I was playing with it. Uh, all I do is touch it and this would, would adjust. That would not happen now. So I think some of my frustration with this was part of, partly because this was not properly assembled. It didn't have enough tension between here and this upper plate. And I believe this is also just for future reference, I'm hoping I remember this. If I run into a flaky capacitor, um, and, it's like, and it's just like this, a quick test to see if there's an internal connection fault. Let's take the, the uh, tuning knob off and um, Hmm. That's interesting. Oh, okay. It's got a... Never mind. I got distracted from it. So, take the tuning knob off. Connect here. Connect to the center. I'm assuming that's the way most of them are going to be made. And then check to see if you have a decent, solid connection with your with your own meter. And... Um, it would have been nice to know this at the very beginning because I could have much more quickly troubleshoot uh, diagnosed this and um, I did spend a, a, a bunch of time but it did leave me somewhat puzzled at, at some point because of how it was behaving but a quick test with the meter would have told me what I needed to know so anyway so this is now I think usable again so I saved my dollar or whatever it was. I have to get what these cost. They weren't a lot. So I'm going to wrap up with that. Um, uh, I'm really not sure what to think about my brand new memory card getting corrupted like it did um, and losing the video. But in the end, I think I got, I, I actually addressed. Um, things that I really wanted to address in the course of uh, redoing this and um, I mean you really didn't need to see me unsoldering, taking this all apart, unsoldering the, the tuner and putting it back on and soldering it back in. I mean that was, that's not exciting video. Um, so I, I don't think you lost a lot but um, for anyone who might uh, want to protect their uh, their um, AM transmitter from anything, any foreign material in the environment. Um, something like this would be good. Um, I thought about gluing uh, little pieces that went down inside so that this was more tight, tighter. If I really wanted this to be sealed, then I wouldn't do it quickly. I just wrap tape all around this, and that takes care of that. Um, I might, I have some, uh, scotch style tape I could run around here and that comes off a lot easier and it would probably do the job I need it to do. Um, so anyway, um, what else do I want to do? Yeah, so it was just my luck to get a defective tuner. Um, it was complicated by me screwing up and, uh, leaving this in harm's way, um, unfortunately. Um, 
when I was doing things, messy things on the on the desk, on my workbench. Um, even though I've got this protected now, I am going to try to make sure it's not anywhere near harm's way. <laughs> if I have to do some more uh, metal work, grinding away at stuff, cutting little bolts off or whatever, try to make sure that I've got my uh, anything that might be sensitive to that out of the way. I really didn't realize this was anywhere near where I was working. I thought it was elsewhere, but I didn't look very carefully, apparently, because apparently I think this wasn't where it was supposed to be, and it got messed up. So, all right, I'm wrapping up here. Hope this was interesting. If so, give me a like, uh, subscribe, if you will. Thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you next time.